How's it going boys and girls, it's Lucas here, also known as Spartan Bambi. Welcome to episode number six, I think, of the Six Mill Show. I'm joined today with IC1 of Team Spartan Grimlock and Callsign Friendly Fire. Today's topics will be West Midlands FOB, which we had a cracking game day last week on. Red Alert Airsoft again, where Call Sign Friendly Fire has been today. He'll give us uh, his impressions of that particular site. And then we're going to be having a chat about transportation of gear and your riffs as well. How are you doing, guys? How's your weekend been? I think we were both waiting for the other person to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go ahead, Friendly, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll follow up. Right, no worries. Um, yeah, my, my weekend's been pretty awesome. Uh, it's quite a chilled one until today, obviously. It made such a difference driving 40 minutes to a, to a game rather than the three and a half hours there and three and a half hours back that I, I've been doing the past couple of times. Wow, um, that, that's quite close. That's quite a good, decent sight for you then, yeah, that, isn't it? That's not bad. And you know what? It gets even better because that's, um, as you know, it's forest and woodlands. Um, we've got the... Oh, what is it? The Ketterin or Ketterin Center opening up, which is replacing um, the mall. Oh, so yeah, the same yeah, guys that run the mall. Yeah, the Ketterin yeah. Center's open up. A dead, um, an old at some Den point, Debenham gonna... store, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the one. So at some point, that's going to be opening up. I think, um, I'm not sure they're taking uh, email bookings at the minute. It's a bit of a weird system. Apparently, you send them an email to book your place rather than just say, go to a website and yeah, book an actual slot. Maybe because it's not a permanent so, site, they permanent place. They, they Possibly, yeah. It's like a pop-up airsoft site. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let, uh, Grimlock, how are you? How's your weekend been? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's... Uh... Went down to uh, see an old friend yesterday. It was been, it was his birthday. I went down to his. I uh, ended up staying over. Um, other than the possible abscess in my tooth that is uh, setting in, everything was good. But I, I, I very, very, uh, I overestimated the amount of alcohol I would drink, and I've come back home with so much more alcohol. I'm like, oh my god, am I even going to? I mean, I've even got a bottle of bloody cider now. Oh well, that, you can save it for the thing. Halloween party, dude. Remember, you still got, you still plan on that at the end of October. Well, I don't know because you know <laughs> groupings of six no more. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it's all changed now. Damn it. Yeah, of course. The fact you can always buy more ale. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, my weekend's been pretty chill, so uh, I haven't got really anything to report. So we'll, we'll jump into the first topic. Call sign friendly fire. You went to Red Alert Airsoft today. I went a couple I of weeks ago. Did. Thoroughly enjoyed it. What's your ten cents on the site itself? Go right. Well, I'll I'll jump on the back of um, what you said about attending the site four weeks ago. I believe. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you know it was a huge success, proven to be quite popular amongst everyone who attended. Airsoft Anonymous has a big extended family, and as a result, everyone who enjoyed it said, "Well, hey, you should host private games more often." And so in talking with Red Alert, they decided that they'd try to host one at least once a month. I don't know if that's going to be whilst the weather still holds up or it's going to include winter games as well. But as, um, as we all know, with the new COVID restrictions coming on Monday, ticketed events remain unaffected so far. So, um, so they'll continue. And hey, as long as you're spending money, the government doesn't care. As long <laughs> exactly. as the money doesn't Let's save the airsoft uh, economy. Yeah. Um, I, I thought yeah, it yeah. to be a really, really good site. I mean, obviously, with any private game, um, it sort of dilutes the number of plebs you're going to be playing with. And so if someone gets a bit, uh, a bit aggy, it <laughs> well, usually I, comes from a long, I think me and day. Carl, we've, we, we've had private, a private game in a certain place and mm. it's a, a certain group of people. Yeah. <laughs> they well, what I will say is, uh, nobody called me a knob until about three o'clock, which is quite good for me. <laughs> that was a new record? <laughs> yeah. Why do they call you a knob? Come on, you've got to explain. Well, okay, so um, I was creeping forward um, on the right flank towards an objective with my fellow Reds, and somebody saw me and started to take fire. So I immediately went to ground, but my oppo behind me, who he didn't see, shot him, and then the fire towards me stopped. Now, I wasn't sure if my oppo hit him. It turns out he did. So when I saw this person's body, I started to squeeze a few rounds off. He right. then called out to me, I'm hit. You can see my hands up. I wish I said, well, no, I can't. You never called your hit. I could only see your body. It says, no, you knew what you were doing. You're a knob. 
I'm like, <laughs> chill out. Oh, come on. It's just a game. And then he ran off saying, um, you know, yeah, we'll play it properly then. So that was that was my experience of that one you know, one particular guy you know who got what? a bit salty. It, it happens, doesn't it? I mean, especially in forested areas, you could get hit from yeah. one angle, put your hand up, and you've got a tree and a bush on the other side, and as soon as you move, you get shot. It's yeah, it's it happens and all the time. Oh, I was God. amongst the ballistic shrubbery, so I could only see his centre mass. I couldn't see your hands. Yeah, if he'd have called out "hit," I'd have been like, "Okay, that noise came from that body, so he's hit." I'm well, that's why we call that's, it. That's why you hit. shout loud and uh, and yeah. you and you keep saying "dead player hit" as you're getting up. If you're behind cover or in a bush or behind a tree. And if you get sure. if you get winged again, you get winged again. I I would yeah, I would no, say we... I would say friendly fire. It's another classic case of you finding trouble when you weren't looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll. I think... But um, yeah. Dis- despite that, it was a really good games. I um by by pretty much everyone involved. Uh, the site itself was was really good. It's got quite a small safe zone, so when COVID isn't a thing, people get up close, tight, and intimate but they've got a really good system of parking cars so they yeah. do it in columns yeah uh, front to back so people can have a... car, I'm guessing. yeah that's right yeah so people if they've decided they've had enough halfway through they can actually leave the car park because this space um unlike when Mark we went Clever. to the operating base yeah people were boxed in and trapped because there was limited parking but it was it was really good i mean yeah, people I mean... were setting up um like camping chairs and tables, and one person had a marquee. Um, <laughs> oh, you know, come on. No, no, that seemed silly, but when it got towards um, the middle of the day and the sun was beating down... Mate, yeah, there's there's no marquee. there's no shelter in that car park at all other than your own vehicle. That's it is it, yeah. wide right, open. Right, well, I'll take that but you know back. what? It, it kind of reminds me of Outposts in a way because it's set up in a sort of similar way. You know, you've got the car park where some people work from, then you've got the safe zone where there's a little shop, there's a couple of bits and pieces... You've got like um, a little party you, zone as well, haven't you? With leather yeah, seats, so. yeah. You've got you've got your burger van, and then you go into the um, the game zone, and almost immediately there's there's all kinds of little defenses set up. So as they're a bit like outpost, um, except it's not biased in the fact that nobody there seems to think I'm a prick, which is is always good. Um, so <laughs> except now, the people you play, play with. with. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's a cool little segue then on to West Midlands Forward Operation Base. We went there on the 6th of September. Myself, Friendly Fire, Grimlock, Stitch, and Swoop. There was supposed to be a sixth member of the team, but uh, they ultimately uh, couldn't turn up for various reasons. Um, my my take on it was is that it's it's a really, really, really well-run site. And there was two. Yeah. There was two incidents that really um, stood out for me from the marshals. Not necessarily a good thing if you're a player, but the way they dealt with it was um, fantastic. The first incident, uh, we all got at lunchtime. We all got called in by the marshals. Now, what happened? And this is not reflecting on the site. It's not reflecting on the rest of the players. It's just this particular group. Um, part way through the I think, first game, I think with this one as well, yeah. I think with this as well, they wanted to inform the players as to why, yeah, such a thing had, had been called during game and yeah. what had happened and why and, and the, the if they wanted to explain because such the, 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 the you know as you're going to explain mm. in a minute, those people had done this mm. that they have you know what what their reasons yeah, yeah. for they basically they basically put the site in jeopardy from a business standpoint and they put people at risk which goes on to the second incident this after, in, in the afternoon but the first incident half basically i think i think we agree it's like mini battle sim isn't it we have a big chunk in the morning big chunk in the afternoon yeah right? it's it, you once you're out it's it, on on the on the day we were out there once we were out that safe zone we were out that safe zone up until lunch yeah and then after lunch we were out out until the end of day. In time, yeah, basically. Uh, so it's like two mini battle sims uh, across a hundred and twenty odd acre site. It's a huge site, but at the same time, it's not. It's it's got enough in terms of features to not feel huge. I don't know if you guys got that impression from, from that. That's that's how um, I got. It's, it's, it's you don't the feel way like you're not even a hot. You yeah. can kind of hop between without having a big slog around. Between exactly. That's like, what I like, meant. Yeah, that's yeah, what I meant. Yeah. Like, with the likes of Moa, it's got. It feels like there's a bigger slog between certain yeah. positions. I mean, that's no. That's no. You know, I'm not throwing any shade at Moa because yeah. Moa is also a fantastic site. But you know, every site is different. But obviously, 
West Mids, Dave, the way they've set it up is you can like island hop in a sense between yeah. these locations, and obviously in between these locations, you've still got your, you know, you can hunt the boonies and mm. slog it through the woodland. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Well, basically, during the first day, first game in the morning, the game in the morning, um, a rolling ceasefire was called. Now, if, the, if you're new to Airsoft and you know what a rolling ceasefire is, someone shouts ceasefire, the next person passes that along and the whole site stops playing. That worked fine. Um, no one knew what was going on and game on was called and we carried on playing for the rest of the morning. Then at, at lunchtime, we all got called together and the marshals basically explained what happened. The long of the short is uh, the ceasefire was called because they were told by a player that one of their own had said he's fallen over, snapped his leg, and now he's gone quiet on comms. So what, what was it? They, what it resulted in was it they had to, they got the traction table out and they phoned an ambulance am i right in thinking that two ambulances were coming am i right yeah uh, no no, no two ambulances were called over the course of the day but that, no no, no I, I, I thought they i thought no, they said um, they, they get due two to their responses. positioning yeah due to their positioning um ambulances are alerted from two local sectors um yeah, I because they they're said. like on the border of it yeah. and it's basically you know it, obviously until that ambulance turns up. They don't know where the ambulance has been sent from. Mm -hmm. So basically, if they have to then abort having that ambulance sent, which is the case yeah. with this, because the player was being a dickhead, yeah, yeah. Um, they obviously then have to go and find, obviously they have to let them know, and then obviously the switchboards then got to try and find, you know, obviously go backtrack and figure out who they've sent. Yeah. So, you know, it's big, it's like, you know, yeah, it's fucking us around, but it's also fucking the emergency yeah, service. True, around. true. Basically, what happened was is that it was a lie. This These players thought it would be a bit of a laugh to pretend one of them was hurt. And as a result, um, they put other players at risk. They put the site at risk. They put the general public at risk because we're, we're taking up two ambulances instead of one. And basically, they got kicked and banned for life from the site. And uh, so they should. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. And I think everyone's reaction was, what a bunch of penis heads <laughs> to put away. What a bunch of cock wombles. Yes, I'll exactly. say it. And uh, I th uh, what was the second incident, Rick, that you, you were here to? There was a second incident which, which oh, happened as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah the legitimate one with the... Um... Yeah, go on. Yeah. Go on, Rick. Yeah, so we can explain that um, th there's... It, the one bloke Scott, he had a specific type of asthma or something like that, which it doesn't affect you. Then all of a sudden, bang, and you'll just drop. And apparently, that was what it was. He affected, and he basically he just dropped. Um, and obviously, that's why they had to get the ambulance in. But the thing is, like, for fuck's sake, what are the odds on the day that they've had to abort an ambulance due to some prankster thinking he's fucking hilarious? Mm. Then having an actual emergency, a legit an emergency, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it just it just goes to show. It, I mean, um, twenty twenty. Yeah, in both incidents, the marshals were spot on, both in the way they handled the incidents they and the way all they all knew exactly what, what to they do. needed to do and how they disciplined the cockwombles that caused the incident and the remind and the not too on on. What was what's the word I'm looking for? Unbridled? No, no. The, the the way they just reinforced to the players that you know don't don't be a douche. So I think and, and other than the that, Balen book. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go over that. In a minute. They had the right I amount like of that. marshals. They other than that, I we didn't need you didn't need a marshal the entire day to be perfectly honest with you. I um, had well, I I didn't, but uh, one of the blokes I was with called one due to. Um, three of us lightened one guy up, and then he just kind of like sauntered away. It's like, hang on a minute, you've just been lit up by three of us. In <laughs> fact, you, you you will see that you will see that on my footage. In oh, fact, yeah, in the video the you video put up, up, you yeah. cut it, just cut it out just before, and you hear me saying, "You'll see it on my camera," uh, and it's just before right. that. I missed it then. Yeah, so uh, friendly fire. Let's let's start with your impressions of the site. Because uh, go on, tell tell us tell us what you thought. 
of your experience first up there. um pretty cool i mean obviously i've already touched upon the parking um you know mm. they were trying to cram a lot of people into a small parking space and i think they they did an adequate job of that um there's not really much more they they could have done rather than cutting down a few trees and making more of a parking space they did the open more spaces lies, before the game yeah, started. The, yeah they the opened their um, 25 spaces up on the thursday before mm. anyway carry on sorry yeah so the problem therein lies, people are going to either decide that, you know what, they've had enough for a day, they're a bit too knackered, or they're going to rage quit. Um, essentially, it would make the early birds blocked in and a little bit more difficult for them to get out. But aside from that, uh, no complaints with the day. I mean, the way they had a table set up uh, for people to sign waivers for those who haven't brought them, I mean, most of us have access to a computer and the internet. At least half of those people have an, have a printer, and another half of those people have a printer with paper and toner. So, how many people <laughs> are actually going to print a waiver? Not many. Um, the problem is, yeah, that, for, for, that was... for them, a few people moaned about how they had to wait for people to sign a waiver. But it's like, well, hang on, this is something you have to do. And if you had the facilities to print one out, you could walk past them. So, why moan about something you can't change? Because you're all going to be playing airsoft at the end of the day, mm. or rather, at the start of the day. True. Well, they, it's not like they even started late the due to it. We talk they about started on time. Topping. Yeah, they did. They, I believe they started at half ten, which was what they said they were going to start anyway. So on points, we're talking poles out of the ground. You knew where you were going, and <laughs> when that ball point moved, as did, did the pole, the, you always knew where you were going to spawn from. Oh, um, that is true. Yeah, the pole system, of, the pole and yeah, flag system was really good. I really liked it. That, it yeah. kind of. Um, it kept you either locked into a place. So I think it was one of our last games where it was from um, Checkpoint Charlie right the way down to the church. Yeah. There were about three or four little game sites that you could run to from spawn, all within an equal distance of each other. So you were never too far away from some form of action. Yeah, that was which that's, I thought was really cool. That was my um, yeah. There was my... a lot of roll and combat, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And what I will say for um, for for a quite a large fighting in forest and woodland type site. Um, certain aspects of it where you sort of go off the beaten track, uh, you can make it feel almost uh, almost like jungle warfare, which <laughs> for me, trying to fight my way through various uh, shrubbery to get the advantage over the opposing team. I, that was I'm trying to do it as quietly as possible. Yeah, don't 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 thing, don't, yeah. Get, don't talk to me about fighting shrubbery. <laughs> I mean. What's only terrible is is when you climb into a, a tree line, you're moving forwards, you're creeping, you're getting scratched, you're keeping th- your head down, and all of a sudden your whole team just sort of walks past you on the path. Yeah. That's <laughs> when you feel like a dick. Oh, you, know, you, you think you're being all clever. All this for naught. Yeah, You think exactly. you're being um, clever, and you end up coming out of the safe zone. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I climbed out of the shrubbery with Stitch after our entire team walked past us because we thought we were, uh, yeah. we were ballers. Well, I Locking thought I was being a baller and ended up coming right by out by the safe zone thinking I was being clever. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, that when I came... I'm like, yeah. where did you just come from? Uh... <laughs> that happens to me in a building. The same thing was at the jail um, a couple of months back was exactly that. Really it's good. So easy, it's so easy to get turned around sometimes. Yeah, and it's the, the worst thing when you realise, oh, you're making progress. Oh, you see an enemy. You take a couple of shots, they put the hand up, call hit, and then you realise you've, you've just friendly fired. Yeah, Living I mean, up to your name, my personal experience of, of, of FOB is that like, I really like the spawning system because, like you said, it's big enough to where you feel like you can be sneaky and flank and that you've got like a good forest and it's a kind of place Grimlock likes to play um, deep, in the, deep in the forest. Yarp. Uh, but the spawning system was done in such a way that you didn't have to go far. And you didn't have to trek from one side of the site to the other. Like in other places you play, you, you find a post. Like, that was one thing with in. like the jail. I mean, you could push so far, but once you get here, you got to tie track and you know hike all that way back to that no, one spawn yeah, point. In other places, and in the like, heat and the, yeah. and that, it's like oh. But it's it's sites like Alpha Five Five, for example. They would have two spawns oh. huge apart from each other, and you're thinking to yourself. That is a real. I just think it was a really good system. I'm not a huge fan of that, like the th- the thick undergrowth stuff. I I, I prefer sites like Red Alert, where, you, where it's got loads of trees and cover, but you can see it, it's clear. If you know what I mean, you can see a fair distance without worrying about getting shot from it from a. I know what you mean. I've got away. personal insights to knowing yeah. what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, I get that. But other than that, it, it's 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 a cracking site. They've got some well thought made up. Um, 
um, cover, some well made up um, props. Um, obviously, the regulars knew the site better than us with all the little nooks and crannies. I think we stuck to the paths quite a lot, to be honest, especially after we got lost. I know I did. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was an enjoyable day. And other than the the uh, the incidents with the uh, the douchebags and the actual real emergency with the ambulance, which just emphasised how good the site was being ran. Yeah, it was it was a good and the parking. It was a good day. Uh, and I'm sh well, go on, Grim. And, go on. and we had comms all day. Yes, that we did. We had comms that worked. Result, although we did cat, we did get to uptack the kingdom's comms coming over. Oh yeah, I just <laughs> beat radio. them out. Yeah. We had to remind them a few times that we were there first. Yes, yes, we yep. did. So all in all, a good experience. Um, definitely be going again um, next year. So let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this particular podcast. We are now going to be talking about the transportation of your gear and riffs. Now, this is just going to be a common sense conversation. I have done a little bit of research into... What you need to do if you're flying with your gear, and I'll, I'll close off with that. Um, we'll start off, I think, Grim, you've got a bit, with a couple of anecdotes, I guess. Um, I've got a personal one when I first started playing uh, on the way to Alpha 5.5. Now, ge the genuine consensus, even if you're going to an airsoft shop, is no bag, no service. And I get a bit self-conscious with regards to... Um, where where my u backs out in public but these guys pulled up next to me at the service station in full kit and i mean tack vests belt the lot not even trying to cover everything up walking around and i, I knew what i knew that i it didn't bother me but the general public sees someone fully kitted out like that they don't know it's for airsoft and they get freaked out they were also brandishing guns on their laps inside the car, which was equally, if not more stupid than uh, walking, around, yeah, walking around in tack vests. Now, from a legal standpoint, there's two key elements there. One, it is illegal to brandish a firearm, replica or otherwise, out in public because you get the 5 0 onto you. And, and two, then you get shot. And then you get shot. And then two, from a from from just a just a basic moral standpoint and legal standpoint, you bring the sport and everyone else who plays it into disrepute. So don't, I repeat, don't go out in your full tack gear to get a bottle of water, and don't, for the love of all that's good and holy, have a riff on your lap in your car, because all it takes is a member of the public to look over. Oh, what's going over there? See that. And your ass is going to be pulled over by a firearms team. That's my anecdote. Obviously, you know, from a legal standpoint, keep your... Keep and, your... and we all know how trigger-happy these firearm teams <laughs> seem to be as of late. You can, you can um, keep, your, keep it in a case, keep it, keep it hidden, and don't, don't wear your tack kit, is, is probably what I'm saying. It's, it's the best advice I can give you when you transport it. Keep it in a case. Uh, I don't know if you've got any, any anecdotes yourself, uh, guys, about any anything you've seen yeah, with regards yeah. to... I have an anecdote also. Would yeah. you like to go first, Grim? Yeah, you go first, bud. Okay. Oh. Um, essentially, this anecdote comes uh, from the early days of Airsoft and effectively comes from the same person who shall remain nameless other than Princess because this guy doesn't really play. Uh, I think, Lucas, you'd, you'd recognise who I'm talking about, Grim, not so much. He was one of the, um, the first who plays with us, and oh, he kind of phased mean. himself out, yeah. yeah. I know who you mean. Yeah. <clears throat> no, he's a sort-of-the-earth guy, um, and by sort-of-the-earth, I mean, you know, there are things he'll do that'll make you wince. Um, <laughs> and he's not above taking the odd risk, and, you know, when you first get your kit and you're excited and happy about it, and... You think, what I need to play is a gun. I want my own gun, and I'll get everything else as a second thought. Now, the second thought shouldn't really be how you carry these rifts. So um, on multiple occasions, at least two, before I had a better understanding of the law, he would leave his, um, his residence brandishing his firearm for all to see, which oh. is not really the smartest fucking thing to do. Um, <laughs> pops in the car. And it's like, oh, do you know what? It's fine. And I'm like, mate, it's really not. Because, you know, what if 
like Doris, you your old lady next door. What if she saw that? She she she's nearsighted. She might she might know you. She might not know you. And you know that's going to upset a few people. And if a few people are upset, they clock my license plate. Who do you think the police are going to be looking for? You. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, secondly, similar instance. Um, this chap was was moving house. I actually wasn't there, um, but I helped with this process for maybe an hour or so and heard about the the rest of it thereafter and it was a case of into a, an address in a particular let's say not well it's rough around the edges kind of area of liverpool <laughs> where illegal firearms is probably going to be something that you might come across if you spend a couple of years there uh, you're going to at least hear of something that happens or takes place you may even be privy to a few gunshot yourself not putting liverpool in the greatest of light here but every city has these parts um and again moving house carrying firearms from a van to his residence open and exposed not a smart move oh. and you know what you already called it right there whether or not it's um it's it's a real firearm or it's an air weapon it it is an offense by definition um yeah it's actually by definition of the section 19 of the firearms act it's an offense and the only saving grace that you might have is the um the response of of the officer who could see it um and whether or not you react appropriately. You pass, you, yeah, yeah, you pass the attitude test. So um, mm. so an air weapon, interestingly enough, can be tried summarily, which means you've got six months, a maximum of six months in prison and or a fine. But because it's tribal either way, you're also looking forward to a potential seven years imprisonment. And for the sake of not even a £50 case, invest. Yeah, it really does make the sense to to invest. Or even a bun bag, you know. Yeah, even a cloth bag. bag. You, know, you know, even if you want to go old fashioned, like you know, Italiano, and just get a violin case or a guitar case or <laughs> or something to make you a little bit mafia. You know, you've go still Desperado. got your street cred. <laughs> yeah, the local well, scallywags might think it's. Be honest, you, you, you're part I, of I've actually Gals carried. Mafia. I've I've actually carried a riff when I had no gun case in a guitar case just to make sure it was covered, and that was going to and from a site. So basically. From my front door to my mate's car, this me riff was in a guitar bag, so it was covered. The, the great thing about that is if you're walking um, about in a public place in a guitar case or a musical instrument case, carrying a firearm, it doesn't look like a firearm. Well, that's great. I've been stopped by the police carrying um, an air rifle in what's clearly a rifle case. Mm. So, of course, they're going to stop you if you think you're worth questioning. Mm. Well, Fortunately, I had reasonable excuse, and I was pretty much given a stop form and let on my way. Happy days. It's it's quite funny because um, talking about actual hard cases themselves, um, I I have, I, I have recently I, fallen head over heels in love with <laughs> the new pro cases. Yeah, I've got one. Hey, how did you get that new case? On one. Pardon? How did you get that new pro case? Oh well. <laughs> Not not through ways you'd can... want to discuss on a podcast. <laughs> no, that's um, <laughs> well. Let's just like you say it was. Con- me, me nephew bought. You know, <laughs> Dude, bought I'm a, uh, you, uh, you don't, you don't have to. You say don't it. have to explain. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, what I was I, about to say is yeah. that. Uh, well, even... no, 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 no. Go on. It'll make you feel better if I say you know he wanted to be a speed softer, so yeah, he needed. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Also, also, he took his bloody high cap out to the mill on Saturday, just gone, you know, before we went to the fob on the Sunday, and he dropped it, and I've got to go down and try and fix it, and if I can't fix it, it's going to have to go down to our friends, yeah. Anyway, what I was saying about the hard cases, that I've actually um, done, uh, t- taken, done night games, as you well know, guys, and um, I've actually taken my riff in a case to work with me and um i've actually I've, I've actually been seen by work colleagues with it and they've actually gone oh are you going fishing so even even um e- even though you know you, you even a hard case can make it look like it's it's not uh it's not carrying what it's carrying so it it is a good thing to have when you're going to and from your car when you're going around walking around in public if you have to transport it um, I would never. I, I would recommend that anyone has a gun case 
or a gun bag or a rifle slip. I mean, mm. it, like it's, I think eight fields do. It's basically a. It's just basically a a, a, a sleeve. Yeah. With a cord on the end that you can put your your your, your riff in. Mm. And it's your a... riffs are not, not exposed. It's not the greatest method for carrying them all. No. no, but it's a cheap, cheerful, and it's a really good method, say, for the the, um, the you know the newer players just getting into it who don't want to spend too much. Yeah. But if you, you know if you want to go all out, go get yourself like one you know one of these uh, like new prowl rolling cases. Plus, or, they provide like, some you know, protection to your, to your riff as well. I mean, I, I remember when we went to the Army in Wrexham and it was chucking it down all afternoon. And it was windy. Yeah. I took my cloth bag, left one of my riffs in under the tarpaulin that, in the safe zone. The tarpaulin fell over and bent my stock barrel. And, I, and as a result, I had to get my gun repaired. If it was in a hard case, it wouldn't have got crushed. <laughs> so they, they do provide a good element of protection from the True. elements True. and things being dropped on them and you dropping them as well because they have foam inside and they're a hard case. Mine was in a cloth case. The stock got bent. Kind of had to pay to get it repaired. you know. So they do offer a good level of protection as well. So, Grim, you got any anecdotes of how not to transport gear? Any chance? Yeah, and it's an easy one for people to forget after or like mid through the day. Um holsters on your hip, on your leg, etc. It's so easy to forget you've got it there. And a friend of mine, he put it on in the morning before he left and he put his pistol in it oh. because he was he was walking out from his front front door at like six in the morning to the minibus. But then we stopped off and he jumped out. We stopped off at, a, at the petrol station and he jumped out and went in and I'm like, John, John, you fucking pit. And he, he didn't hear me and he wanders in straight into the petrol station Gets all his crisps, his coke and all that. <laughs> comes back and I'm like, dickhead, what is on your hip? <laughs> oh, he does it eagle. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, I, wonder, my people. I wonder why the no. crisps and coke was free. <laughs> yeah. They were so nice to me. I was, I'm just like, I'm like, you're so fucking lucky. No one actually noticed that. Yeah. Oh, that's you see, because, uh, I mean, I've, I, 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 I've done it as well, but without I didn't have the pistol in. But you've like been so conscious. Actually, this is in subway. This is in the subway, and two coppers walked in behind us. Well, here's a fun fact: in <laughs> now. Um, if you now. forget that pistol in your holster yeah. and go into somewhere like subway or a petrol station, all it takes is someone to perceive threat to themselves or others for you to commit a second offence, which is possession of a firearm with intent to cause fear of violence. Ah, well, there so you go. So, really, that's, that's kind of a double header there. It's a yeah. big no-no, and that's just a case of, you know, it, ignorance really isn't going to talk you out of anything. No, 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 it's no it's isn't going to help you there. Especially if you're There's a seasoned really no player. Use. If you're a seasoned and, player, you should have yeah. the common sense not to do that. Yeah, and because... it's, it really is on perception as well. If somebody sees that and fears for their life you're looking at 10 years imprisonments yeah i don't know if you so, remember this, the this weird one. thing about it is it is just so easy to do to forget yeah, yeah. Well, well this is so this is always i'd always recommend buddy check yeah well this is what this is what i was getting at when we played at the the site that the site that we will know we will not name um <clears throat> in, like? in kirby say again over the site in kirby <laughs> you're not <laughs> going right, to get yeah, me to I'm do it. it yeah right um, what was it? Something to, something to do with twat. Yeah, it was, that was it? it. Yeah, yeah. Spelt, but spelt differently. No, that was just who played there. <laughs> you mean who owned it? Yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, I think it was you, Grim. We were on the subway, and I just I didn't have it, my pistol in the holster. I had my holster on, and I forgot. And just as we were queuing up, two bobbies, two police officers walked in, and you went, and you just walked over to me. Took, got me shit and pulled it over the holster. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if, yeah. And I was like, what? And he went, you went like that. And I turned around and went, oh, sugar. <laughs> Luckily, we weren't yeah. the only ones in MTP and boots and everything like that. And we had freaking armbands on. So I think at that point they realized, you know, there's, there was something, there wasn't the, anything the, sinister the going on. But, the coppers, uh, luckily enough, at least had a good, you know, we must have got one of the, the few pairs of coppers who actually had you know 
uh, what's this? common sense. Been, yeah, <laughs> like, they've, yeah, they've, yeah, not everybody has that. Yeah, no, because common sense isn't common. No, it's a superpower these days. It's like they must have, they must go, they must patrol that area quite a bit, and they go on subway regularly and see people dressed like that and gone well. well and they've, don't asked, forget as they've well. asked the question before, you know. Go on. Yeah, not only was that site there, there was also another site, not too far, quite away. local as well, yeah. wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, so obviously that's a way will have been a local go-to mm-hmm. for both of those sites. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so general consensus is when transportate, transportating, is that even a word? Transporting your is now. gear in rifts is keep it covered, keep it in a kit, keep your rifts in a case, keep your gear covered, Keep it out of sight of the public, not because you have intent to be oh, in a... We lost Rick. Have we lost Rick? Oh, no, no sorry. Um, I lost comms, I reset, and then I came back. Oh, that's okay. So if you've been talking for the past two minutes, I've missed everything. Oh, that's all right. Well, we're just... Ah, just, uh, just, don't worry. It was we, only me talking. We were just summing up, really, is transport your riffs in a case. Cloth, hard case, whatever. Keep transport it. your riffs. Safely and discreetly. Exactly. Yeah. Can I can I also yeah. um, piggyback on that comment? Because some people might think, oh, well, I've my car's in a garage. I can carry my weapons to my car. That way, it, it, it's it's fine. I can just drive them aside. I don't need a bag. I don't need a case. Mm. Well, actually, yeah, you, you do, do. Because although your car may not be classed as a public place, if firearms can be seen within it, it can still cause fear and alarm to members of the public. There we go. Exactly. And you'll still be carrying a firearm in a public place. Yeah. You I may have to this well. there, but it's dodgy. Go on. Yeah. Can I just tag on to this as well? Don't transport your riff with a magazine in, with the battery in, with the ma- magazine loaded. Yeah. Transport the mag somewhere different. Transport your battery in a different pouch because that could be a saving grace for if you do get pulled over. And it is one of those, you know, try hard who do pull you over. And he's trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, give you, he's trying to get you, you know, get you on it. Yeah. It's like, well, look, you know, it's, look, it's in a case. The magazines are in a separate, the ammunition's in separate, and the batteries in a whole separate. Yeah. Everything's separated. There was no chance of me being able to get all of that into that weapon. In a, in a very you know, short period of time. Exactly. In a very short yeah. period of time to, to, to do what you are suggesting. Yeah. Exactly. They are being transported good, safely. Good point, actually. And discreetly, yeah, and it's the same. It's the same with your your tac kit as well. I mean, uh, I don't know if this falls into causing f- public fear and panic, but if if someone sees you all tacked up, you might not even have any holsters. I'm sorry, any any mags in the pouches, but some people are, are going to freak out. They're going to see you like that, and they're going to wonder what's going on. Especially, especially in the you know in in certain areas certain areas of cities etc you know people are going to be like even if you're just traveling through on the i think with the current um, yeah exactly terror Terror. alert and and vigilante sort of climate that we're living in it's um they're either gonna they're either gonna see you as a threat or in the extreme circumstances as someone who can solve something which isn't going to be the case either way you do not look to us off to solve your problems yeah exactly just underline that now yeah we yeah, we, we tend to cause more problems. Yeah, yeah mostly for ourselves by breaking our own guns. But that's that's about it, yeah. really. And the, the same the same rules applies for any pyro. Keep them separate. Keep your primers separate. Keep your 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 hot pyro separate, or what you know, out of sight as well. Because you know, I mean, there's been several stories of where we've had where the shop we go to regularly constantly gets phone calls. Uh, can we buy some smoke grenades, please, mate? And they're like, no, you can't, because we a we don't know you, b you haven't you know you haven't got a valid defence. We just you just can't sell them to anyone, you know. And don't have your and don't have your reusable grenades loaded in the car either, because <laughs> that's also very very stupid. So that's it's a it, big no no. Yeah, so it, it's basically common sense. Riff, riff cleared, concealed. Magazines cleared, concealed. Pyro. Whilst we're on the topic the of, of oh. pyro, sorry, yeah, can I just sorry, say it, it's yeah. well worth keeping that um, in a container or something, particularly yeah. with um, with the hot weather we're about to step into over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. If you've got something with um, with a strikeable surface that will ignite a pyro, 
you keep that in in your vehicle, you know, next to a bottle of water. It just takes that sort of magnifying yeah, glass effect exactly. for the sun to light up your pyro and okay, you know, everybody and, and might get a good laugh at it, but well, you've lost your vehicle. No, exactly. Happening. Yeah. It happens. It happens to um to bottles of antibac that have just set cars ablaze because people have just left them in their vehicles. Mm. It's very rare of it happening, but it does happen. So yeah, keep, and, although keep, it'll cause a great laugh for everyone else. In <laughs> keep your pyro that. safe, contained, and separate again, and keep your batteries out of the sun, safe and safe and separate as well because it all it'll take is a lithium battery to have a catastrophic failure and you've got a car fire combine that with a uncontained pyro and you've got yourself a fireworks show <laughs> so it, it's, yeah. it's just, just a lot of common sense stuff with regards to transporting your stuff to site over land but equally and i've done a little bit of research on this it's just as important to follow those rules if not more so, if you're planning to travel via airline, via via airplane to another country to play airsoft. Now, I've not had any experience of this. We, I don't think any of us have, but I've done a little bit of research. There's a really good video by Desert Fox Airsoft on YouTube uh, where he explains the whole process because he flies, plays in the U.S. and he flies all over the U.S. No, wait, the question here is, is that a... The world round is this like a global? This is what I would. The, if you give me five minutes, this, I'll tell you. Yeah. What is this down <laughs> to the specific country? Well, this is this is part of it. Now, I did have a little look on an article from Shooting.co.uk, which is UK shooting magazine. They have said uh, always check with the Transport Security Agency their policies uh, before you fly. Check with the individual airline as well because they may not allow you to transport them at all and then check then you have to check with local local laws and it's basically local laws about what is acceptable and what isn't but he's basic what basically what you have to do is follow these basic rules hard case lockable uh declare when you get to the airport when you check in um have magazines ammunition separate but they can all go in the case lithium batteries your 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 batteries can be taken but they must be in your carry-on and in a a battery bag as well um now what in the us i know or rather than uk if it's an airsoft gun you don't have to declare it but it can cause you more problems if you don't so he always says declare it in the uk i believe um you have to declare every single time uh so, so as well as following those standard rules of keeping them unloaded in a hard case battery separate uh and you don't you're not allowed to take pyro on at all <laughs> you're not allowed to take smoke grenades p p grenades or anything like that and batteries are best kept in your carry-on because if they do fail they can be dealt with in the cabin rather than uh setting everyone's luggage and fire in the hold so from it so basic rules is follow the rules you would normally follow if you were transporting them over land keep them safe uh, keep things separate keep them unloaded put them in a hard case check with the airline check with the transport security agency and then check with local law enforcement or the, the rules of where you're going as well after that you're pretty much safe and able to to fly with uh, airsoft rifts as long as you're again exercise some common sense but like grim it sounds like it might be easier just to rent a minibus and drive there as a team yeah <laughs> i mean i mean the likelihood is is that if we ever go playing that, that's where that's where the experiences are, yeah. uh, are made if we ever go playing play in europe i think that's probably what we'll do we'll take the ferry or the Eurostar. No, no, yeah. saying that though, being contained in a small space with Grim's ass doesn't really sound like my idea of a good way to spend seventeen hours. <laughs> Not my ass. I worry about his swoops. Oh, freaking! Oh, we, we don't want to talk about Cerberus's explosive uh, appetite. <laughs> um, yes, yes, Cerberus gets um, travel sick, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> As I found out to my detriment. <laughs> <laughs> Did let's, you send just, them the yeah. let's just say drink, having coffee and pot noodle for breakfast didn't help. Let's just oh, put it that. What? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said 
he, I went, what have you had? And he went, coffee. And I went, yeah. What's that other one? Pot noodle. I said, you've had chicken and mushroom pot noodle for breakfast. And he went, yeah. So, no wonder What he you... was missing was a vape and an energy drink. Proper airsofters <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, man. Vape and energy drink. Can is all I need to get going. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Uh, I think we're going to end it there. I think we're coming up to the 45-minute oh. mark. Have you guys got Don't anything forget. else you want to Dang add? Wood. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Anything you want to add to the topic at hand before we close out? No, I think we've covered everything we need to. I mean, if we've forgotten anything, um, if any, anyone listening, you know, yeah. put it down in the comments and we'll address it. Like, you know, if there's any questions, yeah, put and, them uh, forward. If you've got, if you've got any different it. rules and where you play in other parts of the world, we'd be, we'd be grateful to, to Yeah, know. we'd like we'd like to hear from you if, yeah. you know, if, if the rules are different from where you guys are. And if you've got any good stories as well, let us know in the comments. So... Moving on to October and November, we are playing at Dagger Woods in Preston on the 17th of October, which is a Saturday. We've got six of us going there. That should be a rather enjoyable day because it's uh, ran by people we know by uh, one of a decent CQB site, but this is their Woodland Science, our first, first venture out there. That's the 17th of October. And then we are hopefully, COVID permitting, going to the army in Wrexham in november and one of our teammates is gonna arrange that but we don't know the date for that yet so if you want yeah, to find out date is to be confirmed when and where i think we, we were talking first weekend in yeah, november hopefully if they've got a date if you want to find out when and where we are playing or get in touch the best way to do it is through our facebook page link will be in the description guys and girls but with that being said, that is the end of this episode of the Six Mills Show. I want to thank Grimlock for joining me as well as Call Sign Friendly Fire to giving his You're very welcome. Giving us his uh, legal uh, perception. Profe yeah. Professional always opinion. Good that, um, professional good opinion that board, uh, with regards to the topic at hand. Uh we next week next month's topic is still up in the air but i'll be tweeting about it and throwing it on the facebook page once we come to consensus of what we want to talk about thank you guys once again for joining me that is us done i'll be streaming my usual video games on monday from 7 p.m and with that being said i guess that is us done thank you and good night bye guys bye